Hi. Now, in this question, we're told that two perpendicular forces of magnitudes F newtons and 8 newtons act at a point O. And their resultant has a magnitude of 17 newtons. And what we've got to do in the first part is to calculate F and find the angle which the resultant makes with the 8 newton force. So, if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, I'll give you a moment just to pause the video, do come back when ready, and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. So, if I was doing this question, what I'd want to do is mark in my resultant force of 17 newtons. And it's got to be between these two forces. So I'm just going to mark it at any angle. Let's just mark that in as 17 newtons. And we've got to find the angle that this resultant here makes with the 8 newton force. So I'm going to call that angle theta. Now to answer a problem like this, there's two ways that we could do it. And I'll show you both ways. One is to draw a vector triangle, and the other one is by resolving forces. Now, if I was to draw a vector triangle, then I could mark in the 8 newton force. It doesn't matter which force I start with, but I'll mark in the 8 newton force. So that's going to be across here. Just put that in as 8 newtons. And it's followed by, so we go to the end here, by this force of F Newton. So that's going to be up there. And so that's my force of F Newtons. And it makes a right angle here. Now these two forces combine then to give a resultant force which will act like that. Okay, And this is the 17 Newtons. So I could get F very easily by using Pythagoras' theorem. We know that 17 squared must be equal to the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides, 8 squared plus f squared. And if I was to rearrange that equation, then I would have f squared equals the hypotenuse squared, 17 squared, minus the shorter side squared here, 8 squared. And if I do that, 17 squared minus 8 squared comes to 225. So to get f, therefore f must be equal to the square root of 225. And it won't be plus or minus, we're just looking for the positive value, which is 15. So there's f. Now to work out our angle theta, angle theta appears here in the triangle. And I could use basic trigonometry to work this out. Tan of theta, for instance, would equal f over 8, the opposite side over the adjacent. Or I could use sine of theta equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse, f over 17. But I'm going to choose to use cosine theta because I'm using the two values that were given in the question. So I know that I got a good chance of getting it right just in case I got F wrong. OK, so leave it up to you to decide what you want to work with. But in my case, then, I'm going to go for the cosine of theta. Cosine of theta equals the adjacent side, which is 8, over the hypotenuse, which is 17. And so therefore, to get theta, I just take the inverse cosine of both sides. So I've got the inverse cosine of 8 seventeenths. And that turns out to be 61.927 and so on degrees. And if we give this, say, to three significant figures, that would be 61.9 degrees to three significant figures, 3SF for short. OK? Now, I did say that there was another way that you could do this problem. And that is by resolving your resultant force, splitting it into two components. And if I do it that way, if I was to resolve to the right, okay, taking the right as positive, then what I've got is 8 newtons acts to the right, 
the f newtons is perpendicular to this direction, so it has no effect. And so this is the resultant force towards the right. But when we look at the resultant force here, this force 70 newtons, remember, replaces these two forces, then the 17 newton force can be split into two components, one horizontally, one vertically. And the horizontal component, which would be equivalent to the 8 newtons, would be 17 newtons cosine of theta. Remember, it includes the angle here. So it'll be equal to 17 cosine theta. Now I can just rearrange this for cosine theta just by dividing by 17. So we get, therefore, cosine theta equals 8 seventeenths. And we did this calculation over here. And we saw that, therefore, theta equaled 61.9 degrees to 3SF. OK? So that's one way there of getting theta. Now, if I resolve vertically, OK, then the only force that acts vertically is just F. The 8 newtons is perpendicular to F. So I've got F, and this is equivalent to the component of the resultant force of 17 newtons. So that's going to be 17 sine theta, because it excludes the angle theta in this interval here. So that's equal to 17 sine theta. I know what theta is. It's 61.9. And if I work that out, OK, in fact, I should really take the unrounded version, which we had here, of 61.927 and so on. And if you work that out, you get 15. So you've got your two ways of doing this then. Now, in part two, let's just border this off. We've got a third force of magnitude E newtons acting in the same plane as the two original forces is now applied at the point O. And the three forces of magnitude E newtons, F newtons and 8 newtons are in equilibrium. So what we've got to do is state the value of E and the angle between the directions of E newtons and the 8 newton forces. And so again, if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video and then I'll run through the uh, solution when you come back. OK, welcome back then if you had a go at that. So it should be nice and quick because it says state here. All right? But just basically what's going on, we've got our particle and it's now in equilibrium. And if it's to be in equilibrium, we've seen that these two forces of F newtons and 8 newtons can be replaced by a single force of 17 newtons. And that force acts at an angle of theta, or 61.9 degrees, to the 8 newton force. So let's just mark that in as theta. Now if this particle is to be kept in equilibrium, then the only way I can do it is to apply a force equal to the 17 newtons, but in the opposite direction. This force, they're saying, is E newtons. So E must be equal to 17. OK, that's the reason why they just said state it. Now, as for the angle that this force here makes with the 8 newton force, that angle would be this one round here. And there's two ways I could get this. I could see that this is a straight line. And so therefore, this angle in here would be 180 degrees minus theta. Or I could see that this angle over here would be theta because it is opposite this angle and this dotted line here is 180 degrees so either way it's going to be 180 minus theta 
So if we work out that angle, that angle is going to be equal to 180 degrees then minus theta. I'll take the unrounded version for theta, that's 61.927 and so on. And if you work that out, you end up with 118.07 and so on degrees. And if we give this angle to, say, three significant figures, it's going to be 118 degrees to 3SF, three significant figures for short. So well done if you were able to get all of this question correct. If not, I hope you've been able to see where you might have gone wrong. Okay?